Mary missed the island. The winter holidays are a very special time on the island of Sodor. The engines always look forward to it. There are parties and presents, trees and tinsel, lights and laughter. There was a lot of excitement at the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. Sir Topham Hatt's office had sparkling lights, and Harold hovered happily. Christmas tree coming in! Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand puffed out of the Misty Island Tunnel. They had been working hard at the Misty Island logging station. Mind your funnels! Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand stuttered to a stop. Jumping Joby Wood! What's happening? We're getting ready for our winter holiday party. What's a winter holiday party? You make the place bright with streamers and lights. You laugh and you play. You have a great day. And you ask all your friends to the fun. Rattling rods! We never had a winter holiday party on Misty Island. Why not? We didn't know any friends to ask to join in the fun. That's right. Well, now you have lots of friends. That made Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand smile. And they chattered off chirpily to deliver the Joby Wood. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand clattered into the docks. Then they gasped. Oh, me! Oh, my! There's a star in the sky! That's right. I'm getting ready for the winter holiday party. Why don't we have a winter holiday party? You don't know how to have a party. Yes, yes we, we do! do. Would you like me to help you? No, thank you, Thomas. Parties are easy. You must all come to our party. That's right. Thomas chuffed cheerfully away. The logging locos puffed to plan their party. We need streamers and stars. And baubles and bells. Like those over there. Bash Dash and Ferdinand looked at some cars. They were loaded with decorations. Tip top! So Bash was coupled to a car, and the logging locos giggled and jiggled away from the docks. Gordon and Henry were at Marin Station. We're having a party! We'll party all night! Tell your friends to come over. Join the fun. That's right. Henry and Gordon were surprised. Would you like some help? No, no thank, thank you. <laughs> Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand clickety-clacked into the logging station. They were very excited. Just one thing. Where do you put baubles and bells? And streamers and stars. The logging locos puffed, puzzled. I don't know. I know. On old Wheezy. Tip top! Later, old Wheezy was covered in baubles and bells. The logging locos were very pleased. We need more decorations. We must go back to Sodor. Stay here, Ferdinand, and find us a tree. That's important. 
Ferdinand chuffed up and down hills, through the hollow tree tunnel, and under old mills, until at last he came in sight of a Christmas tree that was just right. Bash and Dash clattered back to Sodu. At the docks, Dash was coupled up to another car of decorations, and they giggled and wiggled away. Percy and Toby were at Maithwaite Station. We're having a party! We'll party all night! Tell Sir Topham Hat to come over! Join the fun! That's, That's right. right! Percy and Toby were excited. Do you need any help? No, no thank, thank you! you. <laughs> <laughs> On Misty Island, Hee Haw was now covered in baubles and bells, and streamers and stars. Bash and Dash were pleased. Tip top! Here's the Christmas tree! Oh, me! Oh, my! Ferdinand sighed. Do you think that's right? I don't know. It'll be fine with a star. That's right. Suddenly, the logging locos heard the hooting and tooting of engines on the track. It's party time! Sir Topham Hat and the other engines chuffed and puffed in. Welcome to the Merry Misty Island Party! That's right! Then there was trouble. Old Wheezy and Hee Haw started to cough and to splutter. Then they jittered and juttered. Baubles and bells bounced and bumped. Streamers and stars shuddered and shook. Then... Old Wheezy rocked and rolled, and the Joby Log Christmas tree flew high in the sky and splashed into the pond. Sir Topham Hat was cross. This isn't fun at all. Bash Dash and Ferdinand were upset. We wanted to have the best party of all, but now it's the worst. That's right. We didn't want to be helped. And now it's a mess. We were silly. Will you help us now, Thomas? Of course I will. We, we all will. That's right. So Thomas helped Ferdinand choose a Christmas tree. Frankie lent Dash his star. I don't believe it. And the children gave Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand handmade decorations. They're for your Misty Island party. Later, all the engines and Sir Topham Hat were at the logging station for the Misty Island party. Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand looked round. They wished with wonder and puffed with pride. Thank you all for helping us. And thank you for being our friends. You have made this the best winter holiday party of all. Merry Misty Island. Island. That's, That's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> Henry's Magic Box. The winter holidays are a very special time on Sodor. There are twinkling lights and snowy nights, and there are lots of surprises of all sorts and sizes. One morning, Henry was alone at Tidmouth Sheds. All the other engines were busy. Henry didn't want to be alone. He wanted to be busy like the other engines. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Henry was happy to see him. Good morning, sir. Henry, I have a very special special for you. Henry gasped. 
This was more than he could ever have dreamed of. Yes, sir. Ready to be really useful, sir. Henry, you must pick up a very special box from Brendam Docks. Next, you must take the box to Farmer McCall's field. Then, you must go and tell all the other engines to come to Farmer McCall's field at tea time. It's important, Henry, that you take great care of the box. I want to be proud of you. Henry Wiesting. He was excited to have such an important job. Of course, sir. I will take the best care of the box. Then Sir Topham had left. Henry pumped his pistons and puffed proudly to Brendam Docks. Henry chuffed into Brendam Docks. This box is special, Henry. You have to take special care of it. I know, Cranky. That's why Sir Topham Hatt chose me for the job. And Henry chuffed cheerfully away to Farmer McColl's. Henry huffed in with his very special special. Please be careful with the box. Henry was worried for his box. It stood all alone. But he had to go and tell the other engines to come to the field at tea time. I must hurry. Henry huffed along. He saw Gordon ahead at the junction. But Henry didn't puff on to tell Gordon to be at the field at tea time. Henry was worried about his box alone in the field. First, I must go and check that my special box is safe. So, Henry hurried back to the field. Henry heaved to a stop. Then, he gasped. Now, there were five Christmas trees in the field, but no box. Fizzling fire boxes! Sir Topham Hatt won't be proud of me now. He will be cross. I must find the box. Henry steamed swiftly away. Then, Henry met Toby and James at a junction. Henry was too busy looking for the box to notice them. Hello, Henry. You look wobbly with worry. But Henry wasn't listening. He didn't tell Toby and James to be at the field at tea time. There was no box to see. Henry had to find it. Henry huffed hurriedly back to the field. Then his pistons almost popped. Bust my buffers! Now there are even more Christmas trees. But my very special box is still gone. I must find it. Henry juddered and jittered to the junction. Hello, Henry. Emily told us Sir Topham Hatt has given you a very special special. Henry gulped and gasped. He didn't tell Thomas and Percy to be at the field at tea time. There was no box for them to see. I must hurry. And Henry raced away. Henry looked everywhere for his box in fields and fenlands, sidings and stations. He couldn't find the box anywhere. Henry steamed sadly back to the field. Then he gasped. The empty field is now a forest of Christmas trees, and my special box still isn't here. Henry, I asked you to do a special job. You haven't done it. It's almost tea time, and the other engines aren't here. Henry wished weakly. His firebox flickered. I'm sorry, sir. I've let you down. I haven't looked after the very special box. It has disappeared. I haven't told any of the engines to be here. And you won't be proud of me. Sir Topham Hatt sighed. Henry... You are an old and kind engine, but you worry too much. Where do you think the forest came from? 
Henry wee steam and bubbled his boiler. He really wanted to find the answer. He didn't want Sir Topper Matt to think he was silly. Then the answer flew into his funnel. The trees were in the box, sir. That's why the box isn't here, and the Christmas trees are. That's right, Henry. You looked after the box very well. Now, go and do the rest of your job. Henry smiled from buffer to buffer. Yes, sir. We'll all be here at tea time. And Henry pumped his pistons and chuffed cheerfully away. First, Henry found Gordon and Emily. Sir Topham Hatt wants you to go straight to Farmer McCall's field. Hurry, please. No time to waste. Next, Henry steamed to Tidmouth Sheds. Thomas, Percy, and Edward were there. Sir Topham Hatt wants you to go straight to Farmer McCall's field. Hurry, please. No time to rest. Henry puffed into Knapford Station. His cheeks were as red as James's paintwork. James was talking to the station master. Sir Topham Hatt wants you to go straight to Farmer McCall's field. Hurry, please, James. No time to talk. At last, Henry found Toby at the water tower. Sir Topham Hatt wants you to go straight to Farmer McCall's field. Hurry, please, Toby. No time to take on water. And Henry wished away. He felt a very happy engine. Henry arrived back at Farmer McCall's field, just in time for tea time. All the other engines were there, but Sir Topham Hatt wasn't. Henry felt silly. Again. I'm sorry, everyone. I thought Sir Topham Hatt was going to be here. Perhaps I was wrong. Suddenly, the Christmas trees were a forest of twinkling lights. Red, blue, green, yellow, sparkling in the darkness. The engines gasped in surprise. Fizzling fireboxes. This is wonderful. Then, there was the greatest surprise of all. Sir Topham Hatt stepped through the trees. He looked just like Santa Claus. Ho, ho, ho. Happy winter holidays to all my really useful engines. Henry's eyes popped as wide as his wheels. This had been the best winter holiday special of all. Pingy Pongy Pickup. It was an exciting day on the island of Sodor. It was the opening game for the Sodor United soccer team. All the engines huffed and puffed to be ready on time. Sir Topham Hatt arrived at Tidmouth Sheds. Today is a very busy day. One engine must take the Sodor United team to the soccer field. One engine must take the fans. One must deliver the apples for the halftime break. And the other must collect the dirty washing from Maithwaite Station and take it to the laundry lady. The engines wished happily. <coughs> now I must hurry. Thomas, you will decide which engine does which job. Emily was very excited. Soccer is my favorite game. I always puff past the soccer field when the Soto United team is playing. Did you know that the goalkeeper has a lucky pair of gloves? Emily was so busy boasting, she didn't hear her friends. I'll take the team to the soccer field. I'll take the fans. And I'll take the apples for halftime break. <laughs> Wait a minute. What am I going to do? You can take the dirty washing, Emily. Stinky washing? I know all about the Sodor United team. I wanted the most important job. Delivering the washing isn't the most important job. Emily huffed huffily to a junction. She was cross. I don't want to 
Puff to Maithwaite to collect the stinky washing. Then Emily saw Percy chuff across the bridge. He was on his way to Farmer McColl's farm to collect the apples. Percy has a very important job. I'm sure I can help him. So Emily didn't chuff to Maithwaite. She took the track to Farmer McColl's farm instead. Emily huffed her hardest to Farmer McColl's. Percy was being coupled up to the car of apples. Hello, Percy. I'll help you. I'll be your back engine. No, thank you, Emily. I'm fine. But Emily wanted to help. So Emily buffered up to the other end of the freight car. She began to pull. Fizzling fireboxes! But Percy was pulling the car from the other side. Then there was trouble. Emily pulled so hard that the coupling broke. The apple car tumbled off the tracks. Apples bounced and rolled everywhere. Percy was cross. I don't need your help, Emily. This is my job. Your job is to collect the washing. Emily didn't want to collect the washing, so she steamed slowly away. I want to help my team win the day. Picking up dirty washing won't help them play. Emily clickety clacked to a junction. Then Emily saw James. James had collected the Sodor United fans. James has a very important job. I'm sure I can help him with that. So Emily pumped her pistons. She had to puff to the junction before James. James, stop! I can help you with your important job. I'll be your back engine. Then the fans will arrive more quickly. But James was going too fast to stop. Out of my way, Emily! But Emily didn't chuff out of the way. James had to screech into a siding. His wheels whirred, and he bumped into the buffers. Luckily, no one was hurt, but James was cross. Thank you, Emily. I don't need your help. This is my job. Your job is to collect the dirty washing. This made Emily cross. She really didn't want to puff the Maithwaite to collect the washing. James steamed snootily away with the passenger cars of fans. I want the most important job. I want to help my team win the day. Picking up dirty washing won't help them play. Then, Thomas puffed past with Annie and Clarabelle. Thomas was going to collect the Sodor United soccer team. Thomas has a very important job. I'm sure I can help him with that. Emily pumped her pistons and wished after Thomas. Emily chuffed into the town square. She screeched to a stop. The Sodor United soccer team was waiting. And Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Emily, where are the team's clean soccer shirts and shorts? Emily was puzzled. Then she gasped. Fizzling fireboxes. The stinky washing was the team's soccer shirts and shorts. Emily felt terrible. I didn't take the washing to the laundry lady. Now the team have nothing to wear for the opening game. The game can't take place. And it's all my fault. Emily felt very silly. I thought that all the other jobs were more important than mine. Now I see that all jobs are important. I'm very sorry, sir. I'm very sorry, team. Emily wished weakly. Please, sir, I'll puff my hardest and make sure the team have clean soccer shirts and shorts in time for the opening game. Emily collected the soccer shirts and shorts from Maithwaite Station. Then she huffed and puffed to Marin Station.
The laundry lady quickly washed the clothes. These shirts and shorts are soaking wet. They won't be dry in time for the opening game. Emily was very worried. Then, an idea flew into Emily's funnel. Please tie the wet washing to my funnel. The washing can dry in the wind as I race to the town square. Emily chuffed and puffed proudly along the tracks. The wet soccer shirts and shorts flapped and fluttered in the wind. Now, the team will have clean washing for the game. My team will be clean and ready to play. Go Soto United, the best team today! Hooray! Everyone waved to Emily. And Emily tooted back. Emily huffed happily into the town square. She was just in time for the soccer game. Here are your clean, dry soccer shirts and shorts. The Sodor United soccer team cheered and clapped. Emily felt very important. Good luck for the game. Two, four, six, eight. We're the team who won't be late. Sodor United. <laughs> Everyone laughed and laughed. And Emily blew her whistle loudest of all. Victor says yes. On the island of Sodo, the engines like to puff and huff their hardest. Sometimes they huff too hard. Their pistons pop. Their traction rods rattle. And then they must go to the steamworks to be fixed. Victor liked fixing engines, and he liked being busy. And today was a very busy day at the steamworks. Cars and engines were everywhere. Hurry up with those valves. We don't have all day, you know. Percy was waiting to be painted. I'd like to be gleaming and green, please, Victor. And Edward had to be fixed. My broken boiler is bothering me, Victor. Victor clickety-clacked along the tracks from one engine to another. I know, I know, my friends. You all need to be fixed. And you all want to be fixed right away. But I only have one set of wheels, you know. Then Sir Topham Hatt arrived on Gordon. Gordon spluttered and stuttered as he steamed. Victor, Gordon's valves are blocked. They must be cleaned as soon as possible. The children are going on a boat trip. Gordon must be ready to take them to the docks at tea time. Victor was worried. There was no room for Gordon in the steamworks. And the workmen were all busy. But Victor didn't want to upset Sir Topham Hatt. Of course, sir. I will have Gordon puffing perfectly in no time. That made Sir Topham Hatt very happy. Well done, Victor. I'm pleased to see that you are a really useful engine. Really useful engines do their best, and they are the best. Thank you, sir. Thomas chuffed cheerfully up to his friend. Oh my, Victor. Sir Topham Hatt is very pleased with you. Victor puffed with pride. Thank you, Thomas, my friend. Now, what can I do for you? I have a loose foot plate. Victor knew he had too much to do. He knew he didn't have time to fix Thomas's foot plate, but he wanted to be the best. He wanted to be a really useful engine. Come on in, my friend. I'll fix your foot plate. Gordon, chuff back to let Thomas in. Come on, move over everyone, please. What about my blocks valves? And my broken boiler. And my gleaming green paint. And our valves. We were here first. Sorry, boss. It's a slip of the hook. Victor huffed and he. All in good time, my friends. Fix Thomas's foot plate, please. Then, Emily steamed in. 
She had to collect an important visitor from Brendam Docks. Emily, my friend. Hello. What can I do for you? My buffers need a perfect polish. Victor knew he had too much to do. He knew he didn't have time to polish Emily's buffers. But he wanted to be the best. He wanted to be a really useful engine. Come along in, Emily, my friend. I will have your buffers polished perfectly. Emily wheezed and squeezed in front of Gordon. What about my blocked valves? My broken boiler! My gleaming green paint! My footplate! Our valves! We were here first! <laughs> Sorry, boss. Slip of the hook. Fizzling fireboxes. Give Emily some room. Puff back. Puff back, please. What about my blocked valves? Then there was trouble. Black smoke and soot shot from Gordon's valves all over Sir Topham Hatt, who had just arrived in his bright blue car. Suddenly, Sir Topham Hatt's car wasn't bright blue anymore. It was black and sooty. Victor gasped. Fizzling fireboxes. Oh, the indignity. Heaving hooks. Was that meant to happen, boss? No, it was not. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. What are you doing, Victor? My car is ruined, and Gordon isn't fixed and ready to take the children to the docks. I thought you were really useful. Victor felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. This is a disaster, and it's all my fault. I wanted to show you that I really am the best, that I am really useful. So I tried to do everything, and I ended up doing nothing. Can I help, boss? No, thank you, Kevin. Now I must do something. Victor steams sadly to Sir Topham Hatt. Sir, if you will let me, I can have Gordon ready in time. Your car will be bright blue again, all the engines will be fixed, and I will be really useful again. Sir Topham Hatt could see Victor was sorry. Very well, Victor, but you'd better hurry. Victor smiled. Yes, sir. Right away, sir. Please, my friends. I have been silly. Now I ask you to help me. I can fix all of you, but I cannot fix all of you at the same time. Some of you will have to wait. The engines hooted and tooted. We'll all help you, Victor. Standing by, boss. Victor smiled at his friends. Thank you. First of all, Gordon's valves must be cleaned. What about my buffers? Emily, my friend, your buffers are going to be beautiful for your visitor. Tomorrow, I will have them polished perfectly, but not today. What about my broken boiler? Victor smiled kindly at Edward. Your boiler will be bubbling soon. Please wait. Then Percy puffed up. I really want to be gleaming green. Victor chuckled. I know you do, Percy. And you will be the greenest green there is. But maybe not today. Wait, please, with your friend Edward. Harry and Bert creaked crossly. We were here first! I know you were, my friends. I have not forgotten you. After Gordon, it will be your turn. This made Harry and Bert very happy. Then, Victor chuffed to Thomas. And your footplate, Thomas, my friend. I was silly to say I could fix it today. Don't worry, Victor. I can easily come back tomorrow. Thank you, Thomas. Kevin trundled up. Good work, boss. Later, Victor looked happily around the steamworks. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Sir, Gordon's valves are cleaned and his funnel is steaming. Well done, Victor. 
I see you are once more a really useful engine. That made Victor very happy. Thank you, sir. Boss, do you think I'm really useful? Victor smiled. Yes, you are, my friend. We are really useful together. <laughs> <laughs> Merry Winter Wish. It was the winter holidays on the island of Sodor. All the engines were excited. That evening, Knapford Station was going to be decorated with lots of winter lights. There were to be red lights, green lights, sparkling lights, and even snowflake lights. Thomas chuffed into Brendam Docks. All the engines were huffing and puffing busily. Salty rolled over. He had some important news. The engines liked important news. A ship will arrive from the mainland. It'll deliver a special winter holiday light for Knapford Station. It will be the biggest light of all. The engines wished with wonder. What's the light called? It is called the Star of Knapford. It's a very special star. If an engine passes by it, they can make a wish. Then maybe, just maybe, their wish will come true. The engines were very excited. They couldn't wait to see the Star of Knapford. Just then, Sir Topham had arrived. Thomas, you must wait here. You will have a special to deliver. Yes, sir. Thomas's axles tingled and trembled. A special was best of all. Thomas watched and waited. Then, his special arrived. Shiver me timbers, Thomas. Look at that. Cranky lowered the star of Napford gently onto a flatbed. The star sparked and sparkled. It looked wonderful. Thomas, you will pull the Star of Knapford to Knapford Station. Thomas was excited. He thought his pistons would pop. Bubbling boilers! I can't wait to tell my friends about my special. So Thomas buffered up to the Star of Knapford. Then he chuffed cheerfully off to Knapford Station. Thomas puffed proudly to a junction. The star of Knapford shimmered on his flatbed. Then Thomas saw Percy chuff across the bridge above. An idea popped in Thomas's pistons. I'm sure Percy would like to make a wish. Then maybe, just maybe, Percy's wish will come true, just like Salty said. So Thomas didn't take the track to Knapford Station. He puffed quickly to follow Percy. At last, Thomas was side by side with Percy. Percy, Percy, I have the Star of Knapford on my flatbed. Percy was surprised. Fizzling fireboxes! Are you taking the Star to Knapford Station? Yes, Percy. After you have made a wish. So Thomas pulled the star alongside Percy. Percy looked at the star. Then he closed his eyes tight. I made a wish. Thank you, Thomas. That made Thomas very happy. Now I must hurry. Next, Thomas saw Henry chuffing cheerfully. I'm sure Henry would like to make a wish. So Thomas wished and whistled away to follow Henry. Thomas raced after Henry, all the way to Tidmiss Sheds. Henry saw the star of Knapford on Thomas's flatbed. His boiler bubbled brightly. Oh, Thomas, you're lucky. Are you taking the star to Knapford? Yes, Henry. After you have made a wish. So Henry closed his eyes. 
I made my wish. Thank you, Thomas. That made Thomas even more happy. Hooray! I hope all my friends' wishes will come true. Thomas chuffed on to Knapford Station. James puffed quickly past. I'm sure James would like to make a wish. So Thomas raced after James. Thomas chased James all the way up Gordon's Hill. Then there was trouble. Thomas rattled and raced down the hill. Stop, James! Thomas's flatbed jiggled and joggled. The star of Natford wiggled and wobbled. Thomas was worried. Cinders and ashes, this is fast! Thomas applied his brakes. His wheels squawked and squeaked. Sparks flickered and flashed. At last, Thomas screeched to a stop. The star of Knapford flew high into the sky. It floated and flickered right over James and Henry and Percy. Then crashed with a crunch and a crack onto the track in front of Thomas. Thomas gasped. The star is broken. Now my friend's wishes might not come true. And it's all my fault. Thomas was upset. How can I get the star to Knapford now? Sir Topham Hatt and the other engines will be waiting. Thomas decided to make a wish. Maybe, just maybe, my wish will come true. Thomas closed his eyes. I wish that one of my friends would come to help me. Suddenly, Percy, Henry, and James whooshed towards him. Thomas's wheels wobbled with wonder. We saw the star of Knapford fly high in the sky. Are you all right, Thomas? Thomas looked at his friends. Then he looked at the broken star. I have been a very silly engine. I wanted you all to make wishes, so I didn't go straight to Knapford. I puffed too far and too fast. Please, will you help me? Thomas's friends were happy to help. Percy watched the star. Henry fetched workmen to fix it. And Thomas and James found Rocky. They huffed him quickly to the star. Soon, the workmen had fixed the star. Rocky lifted it carefully back onto Thomas's flatbed. Thank you all. Now we must hurry to Knapford. So, together, the engines wheeshed and they whooshed across Soto. They arrived just in time. Everyone watched as Rocky put the star of Mapford high above the station. Then they clapped and cheered as the star was switched on. It shimmered and shone brightest of all. Thank you, Percy, Henry, Rocky, and James. I'm very lucky to have you all as friends. I'm sorry that your wishes didn't come true. Mine did. I wished that we'd all be together under the star of Knapford. So did I. So did I. Thomas smiled from footplate to fender. His friend's wishes had come true. And that made Thomas happiest of all. Jumping Joby Wood. One of the most special places on the island of Sodor is the Sodor Search and Rescue Center. Here, Captain chugs, Rocky rolls, and Harold hovers. One morning, Sir Topham Hatt arrived at the rescue center. Good morning, sir. Good morning, Thomas. I have an important announcement. The engines hushed and huffed. The mayor would like some Joby Wood to build a summer house. He wants the work to start straight away. 
Thomas's boiler bubbled brightly. This meant a trip to Misty Island. Thomas liked Misty Island. Please, sir, may I go to Misty Island to fetch the Joby Wood? Bash Dash and Ferdinand rocked and rolled. Please, please, can we go too? We know just what to do. That's right, boss. Boss? Sir Topham Hat. Sir Topham Hat. That's right. I would like you three logging locos to stay here on Sodor to learn the ways of my railway. Thomas, you and Edward will go to Misty Island to pick up the Joby Wood. You must leave straight away. Thomas puffed proudly. We'll take the tunnel, Edward. The logging loco spluttered and stuttered. You'll need our help. Oh, Weezy can be wild. And he, Haw, is just plain crazy. That's right. Thomas was stern. No, thank you. Edward and I won't need your help. Old Wheezy and Hee Haw won't be any trouble to us. We'll show them how to be really useful. So Thomas and Edward clickety clack down the Misty Island Tunnel. With a huff and a puff and a whoosh of their wheels, they puffed onto Misty Island. Then they raced and they rolled all the way to the Misty Island Logging Station. Thomas was excited. The Joby Wood gleamed and glowed in the sunshine. Edward's firebox fizzed and fluttered. Oh my! This is a very strange place. Thomas chuckled cheerfully. Don't worry, Edward. When I first chuffed here, I thought Misty Island was strange, too. But now, I just think it's special. I'll show you around. Edward's wheels wobbled. Very well, Thomas. After you. So Thomas puffed proudly on. This is the zipline bridge. <laughs> and this is the sawmill. It's very noisy. This is the logging pond. It's loaded with logs. And those two are Old Wheezy and Hee Haw. They're log loaders. Edward was puzzled. They're what? They're log loaders. They load logs. And they're crazy. Edward trembled on the tracks. Oh, my. Then, Thomas puffed perkily towards the Shake Shake Bridge. And this is the Shake Shake Bridge. We have to cross this, Edward, to pick up the Joby Logs. Edward gasped. Don't worry, it's just a bit wobbly. So, Edward wheezed and wished onto the Shake Shake Bridge. The bridge wobbled and wibbled with every wheel turn. Bust my buffers! Then Edward stopped. He was scared. Just then, Bash Dash and Ferdinand rattled in. We thought you might need help. And it looks like you do. That's right. No, thank you. We don't need your help. We can do it alone. We'll push the log safely to Sodor and home. If you say so. And Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand rolled away. Then Thomas clickety clacked along the track to Old Wheezy. I'll have these logs loaded in no time. Old Wheezy wished and wheezed. He jiggled and joggled. He puffed and popped into action. Edward was worried. Oh, dear. Don't worry, Edward. You must be firm. Suddenly, Old Wheezy grabbed and groaned and whirled and hurled logs everywhere. Logs bounced off Edward. Blistering boilers. And flew past Thomas. Cinders and ashes. 
Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand clacked back. Jumping Joby! It looks like you need our help now! That's right! No, thank you. We don't need your help. We can do it alone. We'll push the log safely to Sodor and home. If you say so. And Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand rattled away. Thomas huffed to Hee Haw. I know Hee Haw will help us. But Hee Haw had run out of oil. It spluttered and stuttered. Thick black smoke all over James and Sir Topham Hatt. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Thomas, what is going on? The mayor is waiting for the Joby Wood. Edward is swinging on a bridge. Logs are jumping like frogs. And my shiny red coat is ruined. Thomas felt terrible. I'm sorry, sir. This is all my fault. I thought I didn't need help, but I do. And I know exactly who I need to help me. I'll fetch them now. Thomas, Bash, Dash, and Ferdinand clattered and chattered down the tunnel, all the way to the logging station. I was silly to think I could do this alone. I need your help. Looks like you do. So we're here to give it. Do as we say. And we'll show you the way. That's, That's right. right. So Thomas let the logging locos help him. Edward was so surprised, he wibbled and wobbled straight off the Shake Shake Bridge. Then the logging loco showed Edward and Thomas how to catch Joby logs as they jumped through the air and bumped onto their flatbed. Finally, Dash's driver filled Hee Haw with oil. Now it could rumble and tumble logs to the cars. At last, the Joby logs were loaded. Thomas led the engines all the way back to Sodor and to the waiting Sir Topham Hatt. You are all really useful engines. Together, you are a team to be proud of. That's right! <laughs> <laughs> Oh, the indignity. Gordon is the grandest engine on Sodor. He puffs the fastest, steams the strongest, and pulls the express, which makes him very proud. One morning, Gordon huffed into the steamworks. He was grumpy. Good morning, Gordon, my friend. There's nothing good about it. The wheels on my express cars are wobbling and wibbling. And I have to be at Brendam by tea time to pick up the island inspector. No problem, Gordon. We fix wobbling wheels. Over there, please, next to Whiff and Scruff. Scruff has a scrunched scruncher. Gordon stared snootily. Whiff was whiffy. Hello, Gordon! Gordon sniffed sniffily. Hello. My name's Whiff, and this is Scruff the Scruncher. I know. Then Sir Topham had arrived. Gordon, I have a very important job for you. Of course, sir. Today is Clean Sodor Day. It will be a very busy day at Whiff's Waste Dump. Scruff's scruncher has scrunched. Whiff will wait with him here. So you, Gordon, must be in charge of Whiff's Waste Dump. Oh, what fun! Oh, what an honor! Oh, the indignity! Gordon didn't want to work at Whiff's waste dump, 
Gordon thought it was the smelliest place on Sodor. Good luck, Gordon! And Gordon huffed heavily away. Gordon steamed snootily into Whiff's waste dump. It was smelly. Oh, the indignity! Then, Gordon heard a worrying whistle. Bust my buffers! It's Spencer! I cannot let Spencer see that I'm working at the dump! He'll laugh till his boiler bursts! <gasps> I must hide! So Gordon shoved quickly away as Spencer slid smugly into the dump. Pumping pistons, what a pung! This is the pungiest place I've ever puffed to. Which pungy engine is in charge here? Gordon gasped and Gordon gulped. He hardly dared puff. I've left the Duke and Duchess's garbage to pung with all the rest. And Spencer steamed snootily away. Gordon puffed slowly out of hiding. Oh, the indignity! Which pongy engine is in charge here? I am not a pongy engine! I am Gordon, fastest and best, and pulls the express! Just then, Gordon heard another whistle. Fizzling fireboxes! It's James! I cannot let James see that I'm working at the dump! He's the snootiest Sodor engine! I must hide! So Gordon chuffed quickly away as James huffed heavily in. Withy woo, what a mess! This must be the stinkiest spot on Sodor! Gordon shuddered and shuddered. Ugh, only stinky steamies work here. Oh, the indignity! I'm not a stinky steamy. I am Gordon, fastest and best, and pulls the express. Now I suppose I must shunt these whiffy wagons to the garbage crusher. Just then, Gordon heard a hoot. Flaming funnels! It's Diesel! I cannot let Diesel see that I'm working at the dump. He will tease me terribly. I must hide! So, Gordon shoved quickly away as Diesel boiled in. Smells and bells! Only a stinky steamy could leave all these stinky freight cars here. Gordon's rods rattled. Then there was trouble. Sir Topham had arrived on Thomas. With chuffed behind with scruff. Sir Topham Hatt was cross. Whiff's waste dump was a mess. Garbage cars were everywhere. They hadn't been emptied into the garbage crusher. And Gordon was nowhere to be seen. Gordon! Where are you? Gordon shuddered with shame. Here I am, sir. But try as he might, Gordon couldn't puff out to Sir Topham Hatt. All the tracks were blocked by freight cars. Oh, the indignity. No, Gordon. Oh, the silliness. On clean Sodor Day, no job was more important than to be in charge of Whiff's waste dump. Gordon stopped huffing and heaving. Sir, I have not been a really useful engine. I thought I was too grand to work with garbage, but I was being silly. Whiff, you are a very grand and important engine. Whiff was surprised. No one had called him grand before. Don't worry, Gordon. I can help you. No, I can help you. I will shunt all these garbage wagons into the garbage crusher. Uh, please, sir, may Whiff pull the express car to Brendam Docks to pick up the island inspector? 
Yes, he can. Whiff thought his pistons would pop with pride. Thank you, Gordon. Right away, Gordon. Express coming through. I'll help you, Gordon. Thank you, Scruff. I'll huff and I'll puff till the whole dump is clean. You can do it, Gordon. So Gordon heaved and hauled. Scruff shunted and shoved. It was hard, hard work. It took a long, long time. But Gordon didn't give up. Later, Whiff's waste dump was tidy and clean. Then Whiff chuffed cheerfully in with Sir Topham Hat and the island inspector. And this, sir, is Whiff's waste dump. Whiff is usually in charge. Today, he has been helped by Gordon. Very good work, Gordon. Very good work indeed. This made Gordon very proud indeed. Whiff whistled. Scruff cheered. Hooray! And Gordon glowed. Hooray for clean Sodor Day! A job well done. I may be quite smelly, but it really was fun. 